Hello, Colette. I'm really happy to see you. Hi, Alice. It's lovely to see you too. Your energy uh, resonates with me and some things that you also said in your conversation with David Bingham also resonated with me a lot. And so mm -hmm. I would be really interested what what has been happening to you since then. Um, so, yeah, I think I was really excited in my video with uh, David Bingham. You were. Um, I guess it was so new and fresh and um, exciting and and it's just got deeper really um, just the unfolding of who you truly are being revealed more and more each day and it's 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 the falling away that of the identity so in the beginning when you self realize well when I for my experience when I self realized you suddenly the excitement is like wow it's been here all the time i was already it so it's very sort of exciting to have had that the realization bit is quite exciting um and then just the you, just the freshness and newness of everything and then there there's still invitations um mm -hmm. at the beginning and there's this feeling that you are oh I'm, you've recognized that you're on a you are just awareness that you are just this but then there's still the pull to go into um the world of duality where um something may trigger you I mean, there's a lot less triggers and also they're seen there seems to be more space so they're seen um so whereas before you were self-realized you would get find yourself um in something thinking what on earth is this and now it's that you you either don't enter into it sorry my cats join me uh, you either don't enter into it um it's just seen um so at the point i'm at now which is the easiest bit to talk about because it's my experience is that pretty much everything is seen i mean in literally each day more and more drops away Hmm. So for me at this point, it's it's a matter of it's just the wonder of it all because I see it arising, I see situations arising, and I see the mind wanting to make a story out of what's mm -hmm. happening, and I'm just it's just amazing to see that you don't have to do that, you don't have it's just seen. And there is no story is literally just what's happening and i think that more and more falls away to reveal that quicker and quicker until it's just your experience and i'm not saying nothing's ever never going to trigger me again but it's so quick now to see um that it's the mind projecting and creating a story about what's happening rather than the truth of what's happening you know so you meet somebody mm -hmm. in the street mm -hmm and um there's just two people meeting in the street and just what's happening whereas prior what would have happened is there would have been a, um a running dialogue with the mind saying oh i wonder if she thinks this or oh gosh um they'll you know you you all the old programs are wanting to um wanting approval or what uh, were, would have all been always sort of been over the top of the conversation so you would still be there with the person but it would there would just be something else there like a puppet you know playing uh -huh. the game playing the role it's uh -huh. not like you're just a zombie now it's everything seen everything's it's just like so much falls away that you were just you're just in the moment and it's whatever's happening is happening and it's 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 quite magical really i mean it's there's less it's far less than there was but in the less it's it's really magical yeah so i think you really hear people because you're not adding all the stuff on the top the judgments and the approval and whatever the programs are i think you just really experience life as it happens rather than how that separate person wanting to control everything i mean it's so freeing because you're not controlling the situation even and i don't think we realize we were doing all these things you know all the we programs no. no so 
I guess that was quite a long way of explaining that freedom is the is the biggest word I suppose that the most um the correct word for it it's just freedom freedom from the personality freedom from the role of a performance for each person you're almost a, di a different person so you don't have to be you're just free to be whatever you are in that moment and the truth just it's just the truth of the moment comes um and anything else no i think it's just that it's just taking everything as it is in the moment um effortlessly you don't have to think about it you don't have to it's just what's arising in the moment really is the, the experience at this point so there is you know at the beginning there's that you've realized something <clears throat> and i know we were in a group together weren't we when we first realized and a lot of people have the same um realization that you realize who you are but then there's a flip-flop you go in and out of it you feel yeah. like you've fallen asleep and you're like oh my goodness i'm the person again and then have i lost it oh no there it is so you go backwards and forwards and then there becomes a point only not that long ago actually so i was still going backwards and forwards but then i had a point where i just felt that, that movement had dropped away i was just here uh -huh. so instead of the instead of the falling asleep waking up motion or the backwards and forwards there was just this and i was like it stopped i'm just here so that was really nice and then it's this seems to just get deeper isn't quite the right word but i don't know what to call it but this just seems to get more embodied i suppose hmm. so then you're walking around from the, you don't just when you're resting able to just be in the moment you're walking around in the moment so it's with you now rather than look, feeling like you might have lost it and then having moments of just it and the, I know I'm talking a lot but the most beautiful thing about it is the bliss and it's not the type of bliss that you search for it just comes upon you it's beautiful isn't it I'm sure I'm sure you experience that so that's um, too difficult to handle by the way <laughs> it feels too good oh, but it's not that bliss that you chase no it's not like oh I want bliss now where's that bliss <laughs> It's, it just comes upon you and you just think, oh, this is delicious. This is so nice. Oh, but it's really different to being a person because the person would look for that and want that. And I just completely, you know, my experience is that you almost forget about it and then it comes again and you're like, oh, there's that bliss. <laughs> and you, I can access it. I do it now and just drop into my heart center and access bliss. But it's not something I chase. It's I'm all, I don't need it. It's it's a different a different um a different way of being and being a person needing things. You don't you don't need it. It's love. It's there. It's lovely, but um you don't need it. Hmm. So you just stop chasing these presence. You become part of it. You just experience it, and it's not a mental effort. And this is what we are, as seekers try to do, you know, like to force and to do it by mental effort to achieve this state of... I remember you mentioning on the conversation with David that you were reading a Tolle's books and you were trying to be present. I did absolutely the same, you know, a cup of coffee, <laughs> looking out of the window, okay, <laughs> let's be present. <laughs> <laughs> that's the person, oh, that's the person trying to be present isn't oh, it yeah poor little person <laughs> <laughs> well i think it's all part of the the whole picture that that poor little person is um you know i don't regret any of that sitting no. there trying to be you know it's all it's all part of the the whole thing um the experience because it's all an experience else you wouldn't self-realize if you didn't you wouldn't look you wouldn't look for it if you didn't feel like it no. was missing so that person seeking although I didn't realize I was a seeker which still <laughs> makes me laugh <laughs> for about 20 years but I just didn't I don't know I think it for me it felt like there was something that was driving me it wasn't always me it wasn't the the person quite a lot of the time it wasn't the actual person 
Mm, it was mm. just a knowing that there's something different here to be found. Um, so I think that quite often drove the search more than that's why I didn't really think I was a seeker. I was like, I didn't, I didn't really think I was a seeker. I think it, there was some underlying current that was that was making it inevitable that I was going to reach this point, no matter whether I seeked or didn't seek or whatever I called it. It it was going to happen, uh, and I'd, I hope you know my thing is you know I have a channel, and it's just to be able to share it with other people and help them if they are seeking or they are hmm. um, unfolding if their path is unfolding there is to play the game of helping other people to wake up <laughs> um, just because it's so you know I wouldn't have I, well I don't know that's that's a thought but you know I you know the, the likes of David Bingham and Eckhart Tolle and Angelo um, I've forgotten his surname Simply Always Awake is his channel. It's very good. There's so many good teachers, Rupert Spear and Muji, who I fell in love with very early on. Mm -hmm. They do have a purpose. They do have a purpose in the in the journey. So if, you know, if your channel or my channel can help in any little way as well. Because I think it seems to be there's, um, you resonate with different energies at different times for what you need. Mm -hmm. um, so... Yeah, so I don't, you know, I don't know if people find it. I, I, I'm still surprised that I actually have a channel <laughs> because it's not something the personality would have chosen. And sometimes I just end up, I walk past this desk and I just sit down and record. <laughs> Nothing's planned. And that's a bit funny for the person because the person was a perfectionist, so she would uh, never oh, have yeah. anything to have been planned. And I don't think the channel would have ever got started because I would have been like, oh, and it has to be like this and it has to, and oh, has to yeah. plan it. And, have to, and none of that happens. So oh, I know that. Um, it is quite different to how I would have done it in the past. And now I just do it for the sake of... The, the main drive is to help other people, but um, it's creating for the sake of creating. So there's nothing to get, nothing to gain. Nothing to give. Nobody needs fixing. Nobody needs saving. Everybody is perfectly fine. So it's just for the joy of doing it. And I have to remind myself though, I have to say, <laughs> because because I can get that old personality can come back and it's like, it's not working. I can't, you know, can't get this to work and that's not working. And then it's like, hang on a minute. I'm just creating for the joy of creating. I'm not doing this channel to it's not the drive it's to have fun it's to it's to enjoy your life it's to enjoy this or not do it or do it or not do it so um yeah so there are so the there are quite a few changes really subtly um how you experience life now how, how i am well i think it's pretty similar to to your experience and you just said it just exactly the way i see it creating for the sake of creating because God is a creator, and uh, this is how he rolls, he or she, yeah. or yeah. us. <laughs> and yeah, if a conversation triggers something in someone, mm. that's wonderful, because this is what happened to us. We also listened to certain conversations, we participated in certain conversations, and definitely this variety of teachers, well, we, we, we don't call ourselves teachers, but I mean, yeah. those that you mentioned, yeah. Um, Eckhart Tolle, Muji, Ramana Maharshi, who, Mahashi, sorry, mm. whoever, uh, it depends on what stage in your journey you are at at this moment. Yeah. And certain things may resonate or not. And I think you mentioned um, Byron Katie, am I right? Oh, yeah. And I, think oh, I, yeah. I haven't read her works, but I, I heard many people mention her. Yeah, uh, um, I used her an awful lot in my journey. Actually, her her four questions. Uh, mm -hmm. So I did. I looked at all my triggers because that was my main thing for waking mm -hmm. up. I mm -hmm. didn't really. I wasn't really. Didn't really have that image of sort of floating around and life being wonderful. That wasn't really my goal. I just wanted to feel better inside my body. I didn't want that. Uh huh. 
that feeling of being pushed and pulled with life. So when something wasn't, so my resistance, basically it's resisting to what is. Mm -hmm. Resistance to what is creates that push and pull feeling in the body and I didn't like how it felt. And there was some knowing that we're not supposed to feel like that. So that was sort of my search. I wanted to get rid of that feeling, anything that didn't feel right. So I literally did her work on everything. Um, and I know when I had my conversation with David, he said, oh, a lot of people do have um, things come up afterwards, but he said, I think you've actually worked on most of them before because that was just my my route. So I would ask those four questions. I did it slightly different to Byron Katie. I just made it my own. And eventually I only needed two because I could, I'd got so effective because I was doing it on everything, every single tiny little thing. Um, to just because that was just I saw it as a game I saw it as a positive um, you know to look at the shadow I never felt it that it was the shadow I always felt it I was shining a light so it was light work instead of shadow work Oh, because I was shining a light on what was causing this discord so it was. So I always felt it was positive. It's like, oh, is there anything else? This is great. I'm getting rid of it all. It's like spring cleaning. Yeah. I was, just, I was, you know, roll up my sleeves and what else is there? There must be something else to look at. So it it formed quite a positive um, process for me, which I'm really grateful to her for. Um, you know, it really did, really did help. I mean, I'm not saying there's not things that are going to come up. Right. I don't know. Right. Um, you never know, but. Um, I think from this point, you are more able to see things and not get lost in them. But you worked on your triggers, not from the first moment when you got to know Byron Katie's work, right? I did it over quite a long period of time. Probably, I saw her live um, and I did it on quite a few things then. Um, then I had, you know, you have gaps where you you don't search, you don't. This is what I'm talking about. You don't about. look at anything spiritual. It just right. goes up and down, in and out. I think your body just needs to catch up. Mm -hmm. Nervous system or whatever it is. There seems to be integration even along that path. The prior to realization, there's integration of knowledge. So I read one of... So I read my, um, Eckhart Tolle's book, The Power of Now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely loved it. I was like, I'm not the mind. Hang on a minute. I thought I was the mind. I thought I was that voice in my head be able to witness the mind realized that I wasn't the mind so that was the first stage then it was the body okay if I'm aware of the body I'm not the body I'm aware of the mind I'm not the mind so those were two stages um, and then I had that time of trying still being a person looking to be present and and I was looking at all my triggers um, for you know I might have even done it for like 10 years on and off towards the end I was just like okay this I'm not I think that I think I probably had they call it the dark night of the soul and I don't like to worry people about that but the full on mm. when your triggers are really I think I had that prior to self realization for about six months but mm. I didn't realize you don't realize when you're going through these stages no so I had so I think I probably had that before um, where I was having trigger after trigger after trigger um, but luckily I was armed with this information so I was able to look at them um, and then because you feel better once you've looked at them it encourages you to and also it creates some space I felt it creates created space so I wasn't in them so much I was able to witness them a little bit more there's a bit of distance mm -hmm. uh, so instead of getting caught in it and then afterwards looking and going oh my goodness how did I what happened there uh it was like while it was happening i was like oh my goodness look at this this is happening and i'm still reacting but i could see it i could see i was reacting i was like this is a pattern could, why am i still saying this as it was unfolding i was there was some witness able to see it all and then there was the point where it would appear and i'd be like oh no 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 i'm not going there i know what this is and i'm going to look at this later quick to look at it there and then but I knew okay I'm not engaging I'm not picking up I can feel the thought I can feel it in my body but I'm not going to act out the same scenario but I'm going to look at this later and then I would look at it 
and and deal with it so then i had some space so then things there was you know there's far less stuff coming up and then that's when I saw David that's when there was there was a real energy to see somebody because mm-hmm. I knew it was very I had the feeling of, um, the realization was very close and I'd had a vision flip the you know, the presence thing of looking for presence and then realizing I was presence <laughs> but, and I yeah. think that was could have quite possibly been self-realization but I didn't know it oh because I was five words in with David when I saw it. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. But can you describe it in detail? Because I really wanted to understand how exactly it happens to people. The self-realization? Yeah. Um, so for me, it was... Um, uh, David is brilliant at it because he, he knows the words to say. So for me, it was identification and I hadn't got that little bit of the jigsaw Mm -hmm. so I was I realized there was presence I'm not looking for presence I realized I had presence so that is very close but I was still identified as a person Mm -hmm. so although I felt just oneness and presence I still thought that I was a separate person experiencing subject object Mm. life so I'm a separate person in the world and everything's happening to me. Um, uh, it's hard to exp- So that, that feeling of being a separate person. And he pointed out to that feeling of who I am before the story, just that essence of who I am, awareness that we all experience, our everyday going about, is actually not the person that is who you are. I'd labelled it Colette. I'd been told. I go dizzy now just even talking about it. I can feel the flow. (laughs) Yeah. I feel um, so it's it's a coming back instead of a separate person projecting out into the world. It's a it's a resting back and looking in and thinking I already am it. I'm not looking out a separate person looking out I'm here already this which I called Colette my parents called Colette is awareness it's just that had somebody told me this which is everybody's experience I'm no different everybody's awareness everybody's aware if you ask anybody they'll say if you say are you aware they go yes I am aware that is it but it's realizing that that is who you are and the identification is put on top of that and then you believe you're a separate person that gets labeled i don't know if i'm making sense but that's how yeah how, um, oh, i understand it so it was identification <laughs> for me yeah. i'd identified my true self awareness as a person as colette with all the things that i'd been told i was a little girl you're shy you're pretty or mm. you're mm. naughty well, I was never naughty but <laughs> <laughs> trying to think of things I was always the good girl the good girl you know um, so David says that as you enter you get an invitation to play the game of a separate person in the world right so your awareness this might work your awareness gets an invitation to play the game of being a little girl a little boy in the world and you can fully see it oh I'm playing the game this is a game they want me to be this person oh that's interesting I'll be that and then you fall asleep to that person and think it's you that role that seems right to me to say that Hmm. that's what I did speaking about naughty girl (laughs) (laughs) Uh, can you say that now, and because you said this word also, freedom, uh, that now that you're self-realized, and probably we all used, well, I did, we used to have this idea of self-realized people, enlightened people as, as saints, you know, being very good, not experiencing negative emotions. And what I personally discovered is you can experience any emotion you're free to experience anything it's not about 
being good and virtuous and stuff and actually you have this choice and probably if you as long as you stay aware uh, you can go into any sort of experience and having um, this experience can be even more intense than it used to be for you because there is no resistance anymore to any manifestation be it positive or negative which is absolutely relative I mean these mm -hmm. terms are pretty relative to me so have you experienced anything like that I mean I negative emotions I'm lived through enjoyed <laughs> trying to think I have I don't think I've had too many challenges I have been pretty blissful for the entire time I have to admit um, I've had a couple of occasions where something has risen out of me and I've been quite um, maybe the right word strong and overpowering not overpowering mm. but in my power far mm. more than I would have been uh -huh. so I've really stood my ground and said no that's not right you can't do that uh, I think it's happened a couple of times and I've sort of thought where did that come from that's it that's it I know <laughs> it that rises is, up that... and you think where did that come from but it's gone it's blown through it's not like I was rude to somebody it's just I stood in my power whereas before I may have thought well that wasn't very nice of them oh and then walked away I think you speak your mind but not from a separate person judge no. it's very di it comes very differently it's from truth you speak your it's truth natural. exactly so instead of thinking oh I better not upset somebody you you don't do it to you don't do it from the past programs of no. I'm going to get you back or um, you can't talk to me like that who do they think it doesn't come from that it just comes from the truth rises up says what it needs to say and then falls away I haven't felt like I've been rude to anybody or it hasn't it hasn't come out in a way where I've regretted it I've just thought well what was that <laughs> and I actually remember David saying on my he said oh or he might have said it off camera. Uh, he said, oh, <laughs> things are going to change for you. <laughs> um, and this, I sort of got the feeling that he meant this, that I'm all for, uh, you know, my past personality would have to keep everything nice. You know, don't say, if I'm pissed off, maybe don't say anything. Just keep the peace. Right. But then, of course, you chew over it. It's still in your body and you're pissed off. And maybe you do then act from that to the person but it's more of an underlying thing whereas this is it blows out you say what you need to say and then you're as sweet as pie <laughs> two seconds later so a bit like a child you know how kids like really upset with their friend how dare you you can't take that off me and then they say do you want to come play <laughs> you know it blows through and I think that's probably what happens the emotions blow through but the truth is is said rather than covered up and, and covered over so yeah well that's my experience anyway well that's that's amazing because I, I was a little bit worried maybe well I wasn't <laughs> just kidding but it did happen to me on a couple of occasions and it, it's pretty natural you don't feel you're angry because I used to be a people pleaser I was afraid mm -hmm. of you know making someone offended or hurt their feelings and I would prefer you know to sacrifice my yeah. dignity and my truth, just not to make them, you know, offended or worried or whatever. Or but to create from. a scene, yeah. It's absolutely crazy. And I think that this is the pattern that is just, you know, falling down and falling apart now for me. And I remember going to a supermarket and there were a couple of tipsy women. And uh, one of them just came close and said, hey, beauty, can you buy me something? And I just my mouth uh, because I I would say nothing I would run yes, you know, go, look away and, exactly yeah. but I would just <laughs> calmly turn my face to her you know saying why don't you buy me something <laughs> <laughs> and then I entered the supermarket and, and then, said, what was it and what did I say <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. She, she asked the other one what did you say and I was in the supermarket like how am I going to go out now are they going to kill me <laughs> how dare you Alice. Oh, that was fun and with some closer friends I reacted to certain things that but that, that again it came from the place of my truth now and yeah. it didn't feel again as anger as anything it's the truth and it's my freedom to express it and I don't want mm. things that in my I mean I don't want my life to adapt now to someone's patterns 
And well, there's I, nobody there. There's no you exactly, there to exactly. seek approval or to, and it's you know not worrying what you're going to, what somebody's going to think of you because there, <laughs> there's nobody there. There's the feeling, you know, there's a feeling of there's nobody here. There's, it's like my YouTube channel. I, I would have thought, and obviously I still have the inkling I did at the beginning, like, well, what will people think of me? I don't know what I'm saying, and that's like, well, actually, there's nobody here. There is, there is nobody here. So who's going to care? Because, you know, you thought you might get some negative comments and you don't know what you're talking about, what a load of rubbish. And I uh, thought, when I thought about it, I thought, well, because that would have been my default. You know, I always want to, um, I don't want to put myself in the, in the line of standing out for fear of being criticised. That was, that was a big thing for me. And so I just don't care because I'm like, well, that's just, it doesn't matter. It absolutely does not matter what people think of me because there's nobody really here to care. Well, you created all this stuff, you created this YouTube channel yourself speaking and people watching and thinking bad stuff about you probably and it's like all one thing, just playing. Why yeah, exactly, it's all, yeah, you're right, it's all just a play and it's only if I, you know, if the personality picks that up and makes that into a story about You know, so what's happening? Say somebody does write something awful <laughs> on there, just really awful. There's just the recognition of the awareness that somebody wrote something. That's it. That is all it is. Somebody wrote something. It only becomes something when the mind then says they shouldn't have done that. Uh, I don't feel good. It makes a story about what was written so the bare facts are just somebody wrote that's it it's <laughs> nothing there's absolutely no emotion in it no anything it only it's only good or bad or um upsetting or offending or when the mind makes a story about it <laughs> so it's completely neutral doesn't doesn't matter doesn't matter at all <laughs> that's sort of what life's like <laughs> you know things you just The, your mind just there's just awareness of I mean I use that this week I've been using that there's sometimes there's some little tools that are quite handy but um so say you met somebody mm -hmm. and um something's gone on in the past so there's that judgment of, of oh I've got the dizziness again there's that judgment of um what you think about them it's very important what you think about them not the truth about them it's what you think about them from past stuff uh -huh. so then when you meet them again you seem to see them through this lens of what happened before but actually if it's just seen as it's just this it's just what's happening without you know not to, for the mind not to pick up anything other than uh, hi with it's like a, you don't paint anything over the top of what's happening two people are meeting they're having a nice conversation and then they leave that's it it's just it's just we tend to color in what's happening mm -hmm. from past stuff and it you know so um i forgot the practice i've been using now i was just telling you about it's really been effective it's just i used to use it, it's just what's happening when i first realized and prior to self-realization So when anything appeared to be negative, like you need two new tires for your car, I'd just go, it's just what's happening. And so the story would fall about, oh, I don't know, oh my God, how much is that going to cost? And oh gosh, I don't I need two on the other car. You know, it goes into a thought train. Whereas if you just say, it's just what's happening, it just goes completely neutral because the mind seems to drop it. It's just what's happening. Not good or bad, it's just what's happening. So, yeah, so I was using a practice this week. <laughs> I've completely forgotten it. Um, uh, about just being, I can't even remember what it was, present. Uh, it's a similar, it's a, it has a similar effect where it just cuts the mind and it just drops on anything new. Mm -hmm. um, it just is. The, there is awareness of, that's why I use, there is awareness of. So when something starts to happen, and you see that there's a story wants to be formed. Mm -hmm. I just say in my head, there is awareness of, 
And then this story that wants to build goes... Okay. Because there's just awareness of. So once there's awareness of, it's got nowhere to go. There's no... Mm -hmm. I'm not blinded by it. It can't form. I'm not blinded. I'm like, there is awareness of. So as soon as it starts to bubble... Right. So a trigger, a tiny trigger. Oh, right. a, A story that your mind wants to make up about the situation. There is awareness of. I just oh. used that. It's literally just been this week, and it's like, oh, oh, it's like bliss because nothing can form in that there is awareness of. It's like it just cancels everything out, and there is just awareness of what is happening without the story. So it's it's one of those cuts the mind. You just answered the question. I wanted to ask you about triggers. If you are still triggered, and what you do about it. So, yeah. So, so I the see. triggers, the pattern of, for triggers, as far as I realize is a little bit how we said before um prior to realization the triggers and we react and we have emotions about Mm -hmm. it and then that creates a thought and some are bigger than others so we can put them down pick them back up again and go through the scenario again even though we've not with that person who was rude to us or whatever happened we thought they didn't like us or whatever the the thoughts are about it we put them down then we pick it back up again and we put it down we pick it back up You're like, still i have had that feeling i'm chewing on this story over and over again so that would have been the pattern before uh self-realization then with self-realization there's more awareness so the stories play up but they almost just slide off they don't stick so mm-hmm. you don't chew on them three days later they're seen <laughs> and they slide off and you think oh not that old one Oh, you again. And they just keep trying. Hello, what about this one? So I felt like they weren't sticky anymore. They Mm. were there, they were seen, but they weren't sticky. And now there is literally, I mean, I can't even, they're so small and so insignificant, but I still like to see them. I still like to do something with them. Mm. I just, it's just because you just get lighter and lighter in that that identity gets more and more seen and just falls away more and more space more and more freedom more freedom so yeah so triggers are few and far between nothing strong um that i can even think of um but if i feel myself judging somebody oh i'm just like there's just awareness and it falls away you know you're driving and I don't know, somebody could be doing something and you just, there's just awareness. That's it. Of whatever's happening in the moment. And so everything, there's no story in awareness. There's no story, no story to be formed. It just disintegrates. So, um, yeah, that's, that's today. Who knows? I mean, I'm not, something big could come up. I don't know. But, um, there just seems to be enough space to be able to witness things as they do. Well, I find it quite useful for us also to see the mechanism of fabrication of the yeah. story because probably this is how in our conversation, for example, or maybe in our personal work or whatever, uh, it might be useful for other people. This understanding of the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. It's really, and it's hilarious, you know, when the, the example you offered some moment ago about meeting someone on the street and then talking to them but not being fully present I just imagine that two people talking and everybody's chewing on their story they are not really talking they're not present and then continuing doing that when they just you know split their ways this is really interesting how it happens and that's so funny (laughs) to me really yeah you almost see it in cartoon form now right but you know what i as you were talking then i had the thought that actually they are because everybody is awake it's just they haven't realized everybody is Mm -hmm. the self Mm -hmm. so actually you have got two beings who are fully awake fully aware fully in their you know without their identities they are fully aware both of them but they're both playing the role of being a person that's asleep. 
so then it's like puppets playing these roles of being asleep of having got i've got the the shy coat on and this person's got the angry coat and we're playing out these roles but actually they both already are fully awake complete and whole they're just playing the game of being and it's being. valid yeah. yeah it's a game it's and we all, we all did it yeah you know yeah 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 we all yeah it's it's quite beautiful really when you think about it that everybody is already awake and that they're just playing the game of being asleep hmm. okay no judgments Walter no because they could be they could all be awake and just playing the game of being asleep for us to grow right Amanda right. Tweed mentioned that to me it was a really good I really enjoyed that yeah um sharing that she said she said what if everybody else is already awake and they're just compassionately playing the game of being asleep so i can wake up and i just think that's so beautiful that everybody is. else is already awake and they're helping you to wake up right wow they're playing yeah wow <laughs> wow they're playing the roles to wake you up so they're coming in to 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 so you can see everything fully and wake up. Wow. Yeah. It's quite amazing to walk around and think like that. Like everybody, everybody in that supermarket is fully awake and they're just playing the game. That lady yeah. that you saw was playing the game of being asleep to, to help you grow. This erases all the judgment. Yeah. Instantly, you know. <laughs> it can be another yeah. trick, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. another um, another tool. Yeah, because we are. I mean, it's true. Hmm. They are. Everybody is already awake. Right. We just think they're not self-realized, but actually, maybe they all are. They're <laughs> just helping us to wake up. Everybody you meet is fully awake. Wow. And they're just offering you the chance to wake up. Oh, it's a good one. <laughs> it's a really good one. <laughs> it wasn't mine, it was Amanda's, Amanda Tweed, but I love that one. I couldn't help but share it. I share it with everybody. I just think it's it's a beautiful way of looking at everybody. Oh, let, let's say hi to Amanda if she watches us. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you for some words of wisdom that we can yeah, share now definitely. as well. She's very yeah. wise. She sees everybody she as completely whole and complete. All right. Nothing. Yeah. Right. That's and amazing. I think the, yeah. Yeah, I think she sees Jesus in everybody. <laughs> she just she sees everybody as Jesus. It's beautiful, really. That's incredible. Well, back to your interview. Well, I have some, some notes here. <laughs> uh, with David, you were saying, I'm normal, I'm absolutely normal. And then he said that probably there are some gifts mm -hmm. that would be unfolded in a way for you. So will be all how do I put that into words like they uh, will be revealed for you mm -hmm. so can you say something um, has happened I don't think if there is anything since some realization that's I can't say anything particularly uh, unfolded since self-realization um, I think the biggest gift is to is literally what we just touched on to see that everybody is you not you the separate person you this is really important because it's so easy to get tricked thinking the identity the ego oh everybody is me i you know it's it's that you it's that turning in again and seeing that so like when I see you, I see myself. It's not collect the the identity seeing herself in you. It's it's the whole. So I see you as me. I can't look at you and not see me. Hmm. From this place of awareness. Right. So I think that's a real gift because that judgment does drop away of anybody that you meet in the street and and that 
you know, I smile at people all the time. <laughs> well, mainly because I'm in bliss. But just to catch somebody's eye and they're, they, you know, you both beam a smile. It's like it's as a knowing that you oh, yeah. both won. That happens quite a lot. And oh, I think right. I probably just put my head down and shuffled on with my day, really, before. I mean, you know, I think I was a nice person. But I didn't... Um, you know, if somebody spoke to me, if somebody needed their shopping picking up, but now it seems it just happens effortlessly that you help people all the time, and it's not from a place of "well, oh, I'm a good person." No, it just happens, um, and you smile at people, and yeah, there seems to be, yeah. I mean that if that's, I mean that must, you know, I see that as a gift to be able to really see people mm -hmm. and be open be that level completely open to whatever's being presented and seeing yourself and whatever's being presented so you're not closed and judgmental of everything and like this is my world I'm going to get on with it and you know you all get on with your world it's just like you walk around like oh, oh I am everything so there's so there's no separation I suppose I thought about it but it's just you just yeah you just feel open and I think that's you know that's a natural gift that comes from awakening uh, self-realization that you are open to everybody you're there um, I think it's a gift. and something sort of moves through you you know, you might give some something to somebody. I, mean, I, I put some, I put some shopping in the food bank thing today. I didn't used to do that. It's not like I'm like, oh, I'm so good and I'm self-realized. Right. I'm good to buy some food and put it in the thing. The idea comes, you do it, right, and you leave, right. And then this woman said, "Oh, can I have your trolley?" And she was talking to me, and I could tell she wanted to talk more than just oh could I have your trolley thank you and walk away and she was spending time putting it wrapping a bag and I thought oh okay this needs some time this lady needs some time so I said oh it's a good one this one the wheels don't wobble and the, you know and and I can't remember something was exchanged I don't know what it was mm -hmm. but I felt something was exchanged but it wasn't little miss goody two shoes <laughs> trying to be nice to somebody it was moving through me. I don't know what it was. It wasn't me being nice. It was just what happened in the moment. Probably it's um, a natural, you know, healing ability that was manifesting itself through that. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. I guess everybody operates differently, but it's as if the self is talking to the self. So she would have been me. She is me. Mm -hmm. So I was spending time with me. <laughs> exactly healing some part of yourself yeah probably i don't know really it's just it's just spontaneous and you notice there's something quite magical happening yeah. but the mind is not involved because the mind didn't no. choose to catch yeah. that lady's eye the mind didn't choose to notice she needed me to just stay that hmm. i mean it was literally 10 seconds to hear her while she wrapped her bag, she was looking at me and she was wrapping her bag and she was wanting, you know, 10 seconds of something, an exchange. And there was something in me that knew to stay and and spend that time with her. And then it's gone and forgotten, you know. Um, I don't even know why I'm talking about it now. <laughs> but um, I guess, yeah, I guess those are the gifts and those are the gifts that give just as much. I mean, I didn't really give anything. But I got back. Mm. That's what's interesting. You tend to get back. Uh, we have a Zoom call. Um, we did a Zoom call on um, Sunday for a group of um, some people are self-realized and some people are just beginning because we did a retreat. So we've got like this little group and we've added a few more people to it. Mm -hmm. And um, some are not quite. Oh, it was such a beautiful. Oh, I can't tell you how beautiful the group was. And I feel like so there isn't really a team. Amanda and I hold the group mm -hmm. and we say that we're not teachers because we're not and we only speak from experience and where we are 
I would say Amanda probably is a natural teacher. I don't think I particularly, um, and I more hold the space and she does the teaching. Um, so, um, but the class, so it was the same energy. So we're talking and they ask a question or somebody shares, it's more sharing than question and answer and teaching going on. But so they share something and I might have an experience or, but so this was going on and they, so at the beginning, it almost seems like we set it up where the teachers, it's like you're playing a game and they're the students. It's not like that, mm -hmm. but it seems to be, it starts out like that. Then as the call carries on, I felt at the end of it that they had given me so much that I had learned so much. I couldn't put it into words wow. that in, in offering this space, I was getting it back a thousandfold just for creating the space for people to share what was going on with them and what they'd learned and maybe what they'd used or just their experiences. It was just, it was a real, it becomes a real, there's no this and this, it's just a flow. It's exactly. whatever's coming, yeah, it's a coming back and a, it's the oneness thing again, I suppose. We all just, we, I'm just seeing myself six, 10 times over, you know, when we've got 10 people on the screen, you just see 10, <laughs> You just see yourself over and over again and it's just it's like mirrors bouncing backwards and forwards and it's right. just sometimes it's quite mesmerizing can you just think that the self not the individual self but the, just the self your true nature is bouncing backwards and forwards and it sort of just becomes a well, it's just oneness yeah you just start experiencing oneness um with people you've never met before <laughs> so it has nothing to do with give and take or it's Oh conscious goodness, exchange no. it's just a flow no. yeah yeah and i feel like i gained a thousand to whatever i gained not that i gave anything you know what i mean wow it's it just feels really magical to hold that space and and uh yeah play the game of waking people up or helping them or just sharing yeah it just becomes a, a love bomb <laughs> we used to have a little bit didn't we when we did our calls uh, on when David used to join us as well it's like we all sit there in bliss <laughs> when you've got that many self-realized people together it, it uh, we end up just being in silence and bliss right wow so these are real gifts I think yeah, yeah I think so uh, for, for yourself to start with yeah yeah this is just they just bliss you out, definitely. I do experience connection to people through my chest area. Well, I think yeah. where it definitely it should be, should be it's supposed to be felt, I think, and on my back as well. I remember that the heart chakra also has its reflection on the back, so I experience it a lot on my back. And as far as bliss is concerned. This part is also pretty <laughs> affected <laughs> by the, those bliss attacks. And what's interesting is that sometimes I can kind of feel people's... I don't know if they are not thoughts, they are feelings towards something. I remember on the train, well, people will say she's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and there was a guy just next to me and I looked at his sweater and there was an ornament and I suddenly like without thinking about anything I suddenly had it in my head I love this sweater I love it so much I remember when I was choosing it it's so cozy oh, wow. and I, I understood that I was the guy I wow. literally was I, I, it, I, it's not that I was overhearing something yeah, 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 I was yeah. him and another thing wow. ha happened to me, well, actually, you have a cat, and so probably you also know this experience. Mm, I remember seeing a bird flying, and also it happened just by accident, I don't know, suddenly I knew I was the bird flying, and I could sense this um, excitement of the flight, maybe, but not even excitement, but just the speed and the air, and then, then at the same time, I could sense that person down there watching me and I was watching the person and the person was watching me and that was absolutely wow. crazy so I, it's I, that oneness isn't it again it's oneness right yeah 
because it's going backwards and forwards there is no separation and again there is yeah. this flow yeah. you mentioned yeah yeah as if so. you're just in one big bubble or exactly yeah it just it keeps going it's a continuous exactly. flow yeah yeah, yeah. Wow. So that's really amazing. 